Well, hey, Eve TV. Happy holidays. It's almost Easter and I'm getting ready for a little family vacation off to France for a couple of days, but not before I leave you with your EVTV weekly update from Amsterdam. This week in the Amsterdam shop, we finally have some reports on that cabin cruiser that we talked about. Um, regular visitor, uh, regular listeners, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> regular viewers of the EVTV show will maybe remember that last year, June, I picked up a cabin cruiser, a cruiser as we call them in Holland. Me and my dad found one in Friesland in pretty good nick and brought it over to Amsterdam. Um, the idea behind this project is both that we wanted a family style cabin cruiser to have some good times with me, my dad and the kids, but also that uh, there is quite a large market here in Holland for cruisers and sloops that generally have diesel engines, 20 to 50 horsepower, that are really great for days or weeks of fun even, but you're always dealing with these big diesel engines um, and the related upkeep and uh, noise and pollution associated with them. Now, we've mostly been about the high power, high dollar craft, and you know the, the cost of the components kind of dictates that way, but at the same time, there is a large market out there, plus there's a lot of fun to be had on ships where you can get rid of the diesel and start going electric style. So we picked her up last year, really didn't do much for quite a while. We took her to a shipyard and had a new rudder put on, and new underwater coating. Also check the whole underwater ship, make sure that this was not a lemon, but a really nice boat worth doing, which it is. Then winter came, a lot of other projects happened and uh, no updates in between. This week, um, weather has been good. Uh, we finally have the facilities to do all this kind of work ourselves at a nice work ship uh, right around the corner from the shop. And so we finally got to work and got the big old diesel out of the boat. Uh, quite a job when she's snug as a bug in a rug in one of these old Krausers. Uh, she has to come up on the frame first before you get her out towards the door and then finally you can get in with a crane and uh, pull out about 300 kilos worth of old diesel. Once she's out though, uh, you really see that um, working with boats in this power range has the great advantage that once you have everything cleaned up, you've got enough room to do just about anything. Stick some batteries here, stick some batteries there, uh, put a motor and a controller basically where you want to, you've got enough volume to work with. So you don't have to hunt for space like you do in a car or in a speedboat. Um, so that said, we're um, definitely very grimy this week. Uh, 30 odd years of diesel in one of these boats uh, definitely leaves its mark. Um, but that again goes to prove that it's really worth doing. I think that it went in about a month or a half or so and we're able to show people what it's like to go electric cruising and leave the diesel behind you, um, we could probably win some extra hearts and minds. Maybe some people that wouldn't really see us as, as they're not the water skiing type crowd, but um, could really now see getting themselves into electric style with a sloop or a cruiser. So uh, now that we have everything out and a nice lot of space, what are we putting in? Um, well, we're looking towards doing the Warp 9 plus Soliton Jr. setup. So back to our first love of DC brushed motors. Um, we had so much success with the glass drawn and later with the uh, Nedcraft conversion that once you use a DC motor on a marine tr reverse system, so you already have forward and reverse mechanically, um, and you're not really looking for regen braking, there's not really that much mist uh, going with a DC motor. Um, we definitely have enough capacity to do 20, 30 horsepower continuous with this setup. And we have a lot more horsepower under the tap if we need to do um, you know, an extreme stop or during maneuvering, getting away from the sides with wind against and against the current, that kind of thing. So I'm really thinking that uh, for this power level, she's a great match, a good price point, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun working with solitons and warps again. So over the next few weeks, I'll be looking forward to uh, uh, showing you how we install the Joni with her new electric drive line. And I think besides being a whole lot of family fun as a barbecue boat, uh, she'll also be a good R&D uh, platform to see if we can integrate maybe some solar and some other systems, inverters, uh, that kind of thing and see if we can start playing with this uh, um, you know, the autonomous vehicle systems of uh, EV side of things. 
anyway, should be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to getting the Joni out there as part of our electric fleet. Talking about solitons and uh, DC systems, this week also saw uh, some work on the Silverback. Being an EV shop with a couple of um, boats and cars out there means that we can also be called upon to do service maintenance and upgrades, even on site in this case, as it was with the Silverback. And I took a little video of that. And here we are in the distance is Amsterdam Central Station. This is the Schreiers Toren, the crying ladies' tower. And in the boathouse beneath lies the Anne So here she is in the Schreiers Toren, one of the oldest little boathouses in town. Definitely not the cleanest, <laughs> but a classic spot for our classic electric runabout. Let's see if we can give her that controller upgrade. So the issue at hand is that she had a manual transmission for accelerating and forward reverse with the marine reverse system. And for it being two separate levers, it would allow people to get confused and get into dangerous situations. Now Frans Hein needs this boat to be simple to operate so that he can start employing other people to drive it for him uh, while he's doing some of the other stuff. Uh, that means they've now installed a simple single lever system that does uh, forward reverse shifting and a single forward uh, accelerating. Only the uh, marine reverse system requires at least 70 to 80 RPM to engage. Um, so now when you shift there's still this lull before you actually have power. And in order to um, remedy that situation we have to program a We have to program a idle setting so that it'll idle at, at at least 100 RPM so it always engages the clutch of the marine, marine transverse system. Luckily our uh, Evnetics Soliton controller has just the setting and if we add a start switch which will do a quick and dirty installation right now. Let's see what I can Get you in focus. We'll do a quick start switch now, see that it all works, and then uh, install the proper thing in the dashboard afterward. Okay, let's see if we can get this baby upgraded. So here we have the Soliton and we have the Ethernet cable that goes towards a Wi-Fi router that gives us the wireless signal for the tablet interface to see what's going on with the controller. Right now we're going to use that same Ethernet cable and plug it into a laptop so we can configure the Soliton once we turn it on. Then we're going to connect the 12 volt power on signal and the start input signal via uh, uh, a switch connector so that after we turn it on we allow the driver to switch the start signal and uh, it'll engage the idle setting. And that's the quick and dirty solution for today and then once we have her over at the shop we'll uh, make a proper setup using the programmable Siemens PLC logic unit which is rated for shipboard use and uh, we can add the start signal to a start sequence uh, after the contactors have engaged uh, but that's for the more permanent solution that we'll make later on in the season. Okay let's get this baby programmed. Um, luckily as the Evnetics powered DC motor system was my first love I still know the magic numbers 
169.254.0.1 on subnet mask 255.255.00 will get you the Evnetics Soliton controller. Okay, we've set the idle motor speed and a maximum current for the idling. Um, first thing that I see is I know um, that the minimum idle setting is 500 RPM. I wanted it a little lower, so we're going to see if this engages a little too roughly or draws a little bit too much power. Let's check out what this does when we give it a start signal. Okay, I've done a first quick wire up and the controller is waiting for start input. Not that you can see that, so let's give it the start input. It's given the start input, but it's not starting. I guess because we don't give it enough amps. Let's give it a little more than 10 amps. And as we give it more amps, we now have a spinning motor. Okay, we have success. The motor now idles at uh, 2 amps from the pack. It used to be less than 1 amp, but hey, uh, that's what you pay for uh, increased comfort comes increased power demand. But now when we engage the forward, it immediately grips and moves us. We engage the reverse, and it immediately grips and puts us back. So uh, functionality is there. Okay, we see the system, the main contactors are on because we have 294 volts. We are at zero amps, then we turn on the system. Get one amp for opening the contactors. And we feel the motor starting. And now it's at two amps. And we have immediate forward and immediate reverse. Immediate forward and immediate reverse. So that's one half an hour an upgrade. I think the customer will be very happy. And we'll do a proper upgrade when we have her at the shop. From the Sky Store in Amsterdam, this is EV Services <laughs> completed. So there you can see a quick on-site upgrade of a system we installed last year. Um, definitely an increased comfort level for whoever is going to be driving the boat to have that immediate response. Once you click forward, she calmly, gently goes forward. Once you click reverse, uh, she does that right away. Whereas before, people would put it in forward and then start hunting for the power, maybe overshoot. Now the houseboat in front of you is getting close awfully fast. And oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? So uh, we didn't want that situation. Um, definitely want people to feel like it is what they're used to, only better, instead of what they're used to, only it needs an explanation and it doesn't go as far. I think uh, Franz Hein will be very happy with the upgrade. And once we get the boat over to the shop for a full system overhaul pretty soon, we'll uh, definitely make a, a slightly nicer switch system for him in the dashboard. But for now, he'll be uh, out there and uh, showing people electric style in a classic limousine in Amsterdam. Finally, it wasn't all boats. This week, we also got a little 818 work done. Well, we, I say, but it was very, really. Um, he got the spaghetti out. Um, getting a donor WRX means you also have a donor package of wire looms. Uh, we definitely won't be needing or using everything, but we'll definitely be uh, uh, taking as much as we can. So Ray has uh, draped the car with all the wires that we have and is trying to make heads or tails from this absolute mess. So good luck on that, and I'll tell you guys how he fared next week when we're back from Easter vacation. In the meanwhile, you all keep building. We'll keep building. Have a lot of fun, and I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.